Well, Russ, you know, all good things have to come to an end, really, but disappointing at Farsley, I guess. It was a day to forget, to be honest. Um, fair play to Farsley, they did a job. Um, and listen, we, we, we were disappointed Saturday, Sunday, um, and then back in Monday, and, you know, clean slate and we go again. So these things happen. We were obviously um, very disappointed because we've lost three points. In fact, I, I, I believe we lost one point because we weren't good enough for three at all. Um, so when you're disappointed that you've lost a point, you know, it's, it shows you where you're going as a football club. So um, listen, we moved on quickly and are really looking forward to the games ahead. There has been a feature of Harry's this season that when you have had a setback, you've bounced back very well. Well, that's the plan, and that's for some reason it, it makes you work a little bit harder and concentrate a little bit more. So, this we've had a really good week on the training ground. Um, we've had a lot of four weeks um, to, to train and put ideas into the lads and kind of press the reset button as well. Really, we've got 15 massive games from now to the end of the season. Um, but like I always say, we'll take one game at a time. I was just thinking, driving here, that perhaps you know, gates head away now isn't a bad game to have off the back of Farsi, really, because. Even if you'd have won at Farsley, you probably thought, well, we've got up in a gear to go to the international stadium, really. For sure. Listen, they're the best team in the league. Um, the league table says so. And um, the players they've got in the way they play, very good team. And we've got to be at our absolute best um, to get a result on Saturday. But we've done that a few times. We've been at our best a few times. And if we are, then um, we'll, we'll be fine. Um, but like you just said, it's a great place to go. Top of the table clash, six-pointer. Um, I expected a decent crowd. So... Um, this is what we're in the game for. Were they always in your thinking as being so likely title contenders this season? Honestly, probably not. They were probably um, in my playoff contenders for, for sure. One, because they're full time, um, and I think the full time clubs are starting to, to be up there now. And, um, and, and, and that's where they are. I think, I think from start to finish, they've got that momentum of winning games, and they've always bounced back after they've lost as well. Um, but we know there's, there's weaknesses in, 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 in Gateshead and you know, they've conceded a, a fair few more goals than us. Yes, they've got a, a dynamic four going forward and we've got to be really on our wits for them. Um, but there's weaknesses that we can hopefully uh, get at. I was just thinking there were comparisons already between the clubs in the sense that they're very much in the shadow of some very big Premier League and EFL clubs, as indeed are Harry is and yet yourself sort of punching towards the top of the table. Really. Yeah, well, obviously I was at Gateshead and um, they, they attract some really good loans because of the big clubs around them. Yes, they're always in the shadow and they probably will be forever because you've got Newcastle up the road, Sunderland and Middlesbrough. Um, but Mike and Ian have, have, have gone in there in the last two years and pretty much what we've done here really, they've kind of stamped the Royal Forest on the football club, cleaned it up a little bit uh, and they're a club that are on the up uh, and looking for promotion. It can be a slightly unusual place to play, I would think, you know, by the end of the fact it's an athletic stadium predominantly and you've got the track around the pitch and you're quite a long way from the stand. Yeah, I didn't like it as a player. Uh, well, what, what there always is there is a good surface, um, you know, but you're so far away from the crowd, it's very hard to generate um, atmosphere. Um, but I think we're taking a few up on Saturday, I think they'll have a few, I think they're doing something with the community, uh, so I've been told, so there'll be more than expected there, plus it's first versus third. Um, two full-time clubs going at it. What's there not to enjoy and look forward to? Now this is a really good challenge and one presumably the squad are relishing. Oh, it's, it's great. Um, for 15 games to go after the season we've had to to be put in a six-pointer um, with two months to go is it, great. And uh, listen, there's going to be a lot of pressure on both teams on Saturday because we all want success and we all want to win the game. Um, so, But that's what football's about. It's, uh, it's not pre-season time, it's not mid-table clashes. This is you know, title challenging um, games now and um, you know this is why it's great to be a part of at the moment. It is a good league this time isn't it because no one's run away at the top I and mean, Gateshead are top but they're by no means home and hose as it were and so the fight for the playoffs is well very you could go down to 11th or 12th probably. Yeah for sure we went to York Fold versus York on, on Tuesday and what a great advertisement for the league that was two full-time clubs um, with good budgets, good surface, good stadium, uh, playing a really good game and I thought York deserved it and that coming up from out of nowhere now, five, five wins on the bounce, um, it's a good league, it's competitive and like you said I think there's challenges going everywhere now, there's hurdles got to be jumped over and we're one of those clubs that hopefully are knocking on the door. Obviously the league is a mix of full-time and part-time clubs, are we at the stage of the season now perhaps where the full-time element starts to tell? I'd like to think so. I think that's where you think the advantage might be, um, a bit fitter. But saying that, it's, we're still catching up on games. Everyone still gets niggles and injuries. So I don't know this season. Um, I'd like to think it will be and, 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 the, and the fitness sees everybody through. 
Um, but you know they're still humans and they're still National North players um, who you know hopefully are a little bit fitter than others. But but that's it. Just a word about Matt Preston. Um, what's the latest on him? Um, I believe he had his, his second operation last night or this morning, and hopefully he'll be out of hospital in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, and when he's out of hospital, I think that's the best place for him to be at home then, um, with his family around him, and, and we'll go and see him next week. Yeah, they give him a massive lift to go home, I think. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll go and get some food or some coffee and, and bring it round to him. Um, watch a bit of football on TV. And just, you know, he's been out of it for two weeks. Um, he's just got to sort his, his self out and his body out, and he's been looked after. He's in very good hands. Um, and as soon as this operation is done, which it was this morning or last night, he can start to look forward and, and get the rehab programme in place. Final one from me, uh, just a word about your squad, are you pretty much hailing and hearty going to get to? Yeah, I think it's pretty much similar to, to last week, a um, few niggles after last Saturday, we've had a good week to, to recover and um, listen, we always want improvements and this is a body out there that we think can improve, I think we, you know, we'll, we'll have a go at that, but it's got to be the right person. And with 15 games to go, 14 after Saturday, um, I'm only going to bring players in that can improve the squad. And it'll have to be done in the next fortnight or so anyway, wouldn't it now? That's the plan, Trev, that's the plan. But is, you're not likely to have anybody new in by Saturday? No, no, not for sure. And if I did, I probably wouldn't say anything anyway. <laughs> Fair point, one more way. Thank you very much. Thanks, Trevor. Just, just a quick word on, on Ethan. <coughs> Excuse me, are you, are you tied up? Uh, contractually at least anyway. Um, I, I know obviously you, you're pleased to get that done because I guess with half an eye on the future well he, he's certainly someone you want around isn't he? So Ethan goes into the mould of your Kazai Martins, your Jaden Whites, um, your Tom Palmers and he's I think if you look back two years ago when we signed him up under Jimmy Shan, um, how he's developed in the last two years is massive you know, he held the front line for the first six games when Morgan Smith was injured and then he's come in and scored goals and been a massive part of the football club. He's a real crowd pleaser. He's a community lad as well. And um, I think he's so hungry to do well and that's what we, we want here. So I'm, I'm delighted. Delighted he's, he's, he's stayed with us for the next season at least.